Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Eleanor Scully, Associate Head of School at National Cathedral, and she has recently been named to be Head of School at Langley School. National Cathedral is an independent Episcopal day school that serves 580 girls from grades 4 through 12, and Langley is a non-affiliated school that serves 500 students from preschool through 8th grade. Eleanor previously served as Upper School Director at Cathedral and Associate Director of the Upper School at St. Stephen's and St. Agnes School. She's generously agreed to share some of her experience with us, and I'd like to thank you, Eleanor, for joining us My today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So it, we, we come to you at a very interesting inflection point in your sure. career. You have served with uh, distinction at, at National Cathedral, and mm -hmm. now you're going to be taking the head of school mm -hmm. slot at Langley. Uh, tell us how you feel at this, <laughs> at this point of, sure. of completing one mm -hmm. uh, task in service to, to children sure. and parents and, and moving on. Well, I'm obviously very excited about the new opportunity that awaits me at the Langley School. I think for me, um, I was at a point in my career where I realized that if I was going to sustain a deep commitment to independent schools and looking at how schools could provide the best education for students, really in grades K through 12, I needed to round out my experience a little bit. Right. I had focused mostly in my previous jobs at the sort of middle and high school ages. My doctoral work and my dissertation research focused on teenagers. And so when the Langley opportunity came along, I thought it would be a very exciting moment for me to dig into that preschool through eighth grade curriculum and really understand sort of the issues facing elementary education. That said, um, I leave Cathedral with a heavy heart. It has been a wonderful place for me to learn about educating women and really focusing on what it means to be an institution that is committed to the empowerment and education of women at an interesting time in education. So it has been rich and rewarding. Um, so it's a bittersweet inflection moment, if you will, because I think the work I will do at Langley will allow me to grow and really expand my horizons as an educational leader. But I leave a place to which I am devoted, um, wonderful colleagues, wonderful students, and a program that I really believe in. And it's, it's great after you have, you felt like you've done a, a really good piece mm -hmm. of work. It's great to repot and, yeah. and have some of your previous assumptions uh, shaken up a bit. Sure. Uh, colleagues tend to organize around people that they like, but, yeah. but sometimes there are parts of that that become complacent. Yeah, so absolutely. So you basically looked at this challenge and you've said, well, I'm going, I'm going to uh, make myself a little bit uncomfortable. Absolutely. Get out of the comfort zone. And for me, this was a curricular area and an age group that is not something that I feel entirely expert in. But at the same time, um, it's a, being a head of school, it's a different kind of leadership role, too. So you're building a team around a particular mission and really understanding what you can do to help the school get to the next level. Describe the differences in terms of the school's uh, cultures. Sure. I think that um, they share a lot of things in common. They are both schools in the greater Washington, D.C. area meaning they are sort of in an urban environment that is very interested in looking at how it maximizes the resources of being in the nation's capital, um, serving parents and children that are very motivated and, if you will, somewhat high-powered. Um, so I think the, the cultures are similar in that way. The challenge, I think, of working in an institution that is a fourth through twelfth grade institution is that as much, try as you might, the high school age and the high school years often become a focal point of what the school is about. Um, when you take students from fourth grade all the way through twelfth grade, there's a lot of energy to what that graduate will look like when she leaves high school. At Langley, by virtue of the fact that it ends at eighth grade, you're looking at a model where you're developing a student who's going to leave and then go have high school somewhere else right. in a variety of places and in a variety, in a variety of types of institutions. And so you're focusing on the developmental needs of that age group in a particularly different way. So I think the cultures are different in that way. I think they're um, also different in that Langley is a co-educational school without a religious mission and mm -hmm. identity, and Cathedral is a girls' school affiliated with the National Cathedral in partnership with St. Albans School for Boys, on a close, the Cathedral Close, has three different schools and a cathedral. So the sort of organizational structure and the challenges of working within that environment are slightly different than a standalone preschool through eighth grade elementary school program that has a slightly different mission and focus. Do you feel that the uh, religious identity of the uh, cathedral, the National Cathedral uh, School, um, 
or the the religious um, proximity mm -hmm. or an affiliation. Sure. I don't know. I don't even yeah. know what term yeah. uh, can be used. No, I think you're using the right term. Um, does that have a, a major impact on the outlook and on the programming uh, of the school, the culture of the school? I think it does in a subtle way. I mean, I think, you know, Episcopal schools um, are different than Catholic schools and other parochial schools. I mean, it, it, it's a different beast. What's unique about National Cathedral School and what I have really admired and enjoyed about my time there is that it's, aff it's affiliated with the National Cathedral which has as its mission to be a house of prayer for all people. Right. It really has a posture and a calling to be an Episcop a, a church in the Episcopal Diocese that is about inclusion and about promoting interfaith understanding and dialogue in a tradition of Episcopal um, religious uh, faith, but it has a very specific mission. It wants to bring people to the nation's capital to that uh, church for a particular purpose. And I think that does shape what happens at National Cathedral School. I think we have, as part of our identity, a desire to set young women forth into the world prepared and possessed of skills that will enable them to navigate difference, to be able to have a strong, hopefully, sense of connection to some sort of spiritual faith journey of their own making. But we're not going to dictate what that's going to look like for them. And our programs in the study of religion are academic. So when girls take religion classes at National Cathedral School, it's the academic study of religion. We want to prepare them to be able to um, interrogate texts, to be able to think deeply about religious philosophy, and to be able to use that as a springboard to think about how they um, become ethical citizens and how they become strong, independent women. So I think that the connection to the National Cathedral really does shape who we are. Um, it, it is, um, we inculcate, I think, in these young women a sense that they're connected to something larger than themselves. They are being prepared for a world that needs them. And in order for, they, for them to be as successful as we think they can be, they need to be comfortable navigating multiple perspectives, be they religious or otherwise, and to be really able to kind of have conversations and think creatively in a context that is diverse. In terms of scale and budget, um, of the two schools mm -hmm. with the same number of, of uh, students. I assume that, that from a budgetary and mm -hmm. he headcount perspective, mm -hmm. they're not all that different, but programmatically, th th there mm -hmm. must be a lot of distinguishing features. Could you describe that sure. whole landscape? And I think there are some challenges and issues that make the cathedral school's financial situation different than others because National Cathedral School for Girls is part of the Protestant Episcopal Cathedral Foundation, which is the umbrella organization under which there is St. Albans School for Boys and Beauvoir, the National Cathedral School's elementary school. So there are three academic institutions, a cathedral under this umbrella organization. And what I think is challenging is that there are, we're one corporation, mm. um, but with different boards, with different endowments, with different fundraising offices. So there's a lot of complexity to what happens in terms of finance at National Cathedral School that you would not get in most other independent school models. National Cathedral School also has an endowment. Um, it is about a $22 million endowment that does help to offset the, oper the cost of the operating budget. There's a draw on the endowment. Um, and so there are some things that make our, our situation different than Langley's. Langley is an entirely tuition-driven school with a very, very small endowment. At 500 students, um, they are tuition-dependent. Um, National Cathedral School has 580 students, and we are very dependent on tuition. It's not that our endowment is such that we can't be dependent on tuition, but it does make for a, a slightly different financial model. The programs um, are different, and the facilities are different. So at National Cathedral School, you have a campus that is um, on the Cathedral Close property um, proper. You've got an old historic building um, from the 19, early 1900s. You have a new geothermal, um, brand new reskinned middle school and upper school science complex across the street. Um, it's not a lot of acreage, but it's a, it's a lot of space. We also have a $25 million relatively new five-story underground athletic facility hmm. um, that is um, pretty state-of-the-art. It has a five-story climbing wall, it has four basketball courts, it has dance studios, and a state-of-the-art weight room. So for the high school population, you need to have facilities like that to compete, um, particularly in Washington, D.C., where there are a lot of very well-resourced independent schools within walking distance of our campus. Right. So staying up-to-date on that um, 
and having facilities that we are that are commensurate with our program are vital. Langley is a suburban campus, so slightly different. Younger students, um, smaller footprint. Although Langley is about to complete a twelve million dollar brand new middle school uh, facility um, to bring that program up where it needs to be in terms of science, technology, having making use of outdoor space, outdoor learning, outdoor education. So I think the programmatic needs are different, um, but not dramatically because in Washington DC when parents are looking for a place to put their children in an independent school they want to see a facility that they think is fresh and following the most recent pedagogical innovations and techniques and um, sparkles to a degree. Um, what Cathedral I think is up against in terms of its you know financial challenges is it has a brother school across the close that has you know, an endowment that is significantly larger than ours is, which means that they can pay teachers more than we can. And so I think one of the challenges of a girl's school when you're trying to create a culture of philanthropy and giving is getting a generation of women who have not traditionally thought about giving to their high school alma mater um, significant gifts, building that culture of philanthropy in women for their high schools, um, and really cultivating, I think, in our graduates a sense of connection to the school that will last beyond. Right. Langley, as a, a school that ends at eighth grade, has a different kind of challenge because you're looking at the fundraising being based on your current parents and some loyal, you know, faithful um, parents that have stayed with the school, but those children are going on to a high school and then on to a college. When students leave cathedral, they go to their, their college, and so we're competing to some degree with, with their associations and their connections to their college alma maters. Langley has to has a, a step in between. Um, so those are some of the challenges. So you're looking at parents and grandparents when you're talking to yes. Langley. You don't exactly. you don't have the uh, necessarily the um, the alumni body to come alumni back. body. Yes. Plus between eighth grade and uh, high school and then college, there are an awful lot of memories that are going to exactly. accumulate and an awful lot of organizations exactly. that are going to be approaching yeah. um, your alumni yeah. base. I was at a, a coffee recently with some former trustees and former pa parents of Langley as part of being welcomed to the community, and they were talking, sharing their wisdom and their experiences. And what struck me about that conversation was that what Langley is capitalizing on rightly is a sense of that early foundation, what students felt that, that what they were reporting back was what their children, if they were parents, um, were given in terms of that early confidence and that sense, that core sense of... Um, agency and effectiveness in the world that they got at Langley that many of them described as being more formative than their high school years because it came at a pivotal time. If you think about a preschool through eighth grade sequence, that's a pretty long period of time mm -hmm. to be laying that foundation and then putting them forth out to sort of outplacement for high school really in a, in a really self-possessed posture. And that became something that they felt was unique and brought them back to the school either as philanthropists and wanting to continue to, to give to the institution or just to promote and support its development long term. So that was an interesting um, sense of pride, I think, that families had and trustees had. Now, the independent school arena is highly competitive yes. and getting increasingly so. Sure. What are the ideas that you have discussed with the board mm -hmm. in your recruiting process mm -hmm. that you feel um, had particular resonance, found particularly sure. particular resonance with the not only the board and the parents, but also with the team that is sure. providing education at Langley. So I think that the themes that have emerged during that process are related to a couple of things. The first being a strong desire on the part of this institution to be um, a center of ped pedagogical excellence and innovation. We are at a time when we are learning so much more about um, in the field of cognitive neuroscience and education about what happens for students in terms of their learning at very young ages all the way through their older um, adolescence and young adulthood. And I think Langley is very interested in making sure that it capitalizes on the research that is out there and has the best program that it can have. Its mantra and its mission is um, every child every day making sure that you meet the needs of individual children, their learning profiles in a very nuanced and sophisticated way, and making sure that your pedagogy and the program is the best that it can be. Coupled with an idea that 21st century learners are going to need to be, um, we need to be cultivating their social and emotional learning, particularly around themes of um, 
global education and multiculturalism and inclusion and diversity. So the other thing that we spent a fair bit of time talking about is how do we, with very young children, start thinking about how to actualize their mission around core values and think about how they develop a program for social emotional learning that would distinguish them in the country and as a leader in elementary and early childhood education all the way through those early teen years. And finally, I think looking at what it means to develop a culture in the school of professional growth and renewal for faculty so that the generation of people that are contemplating education and coming into the field who have lots of compelling choices not just in education but in other nonprofit sectors as well as for-profit sectors think of making a commitment to teaching and come to Langley and say I want to be here and I want to develop my skills and I want to stay and getting figuring out how you capture them in a professional development program and grow their capacity so that they're more likely to commit to the institution for a longer period of time I think that this idea that you can create a mission that is unique to your school and that you actively go out and seek to recruit people that believe in that mission and see the value of what that would do for their child, for them as, an, as a learner, as an adult learner, for a family, is what makes independent schools different in some ways. I also think that independent schools walk a tightrope, though, because a lot of teachers come to independent schools because they want the intellectual and curricular freedom to do what they want in the classroom. And that's natural. You know, you don't want to be teaching to a test. You don't want your raise necessarily to, to be tied to how your students perform on a, a statewide standardized test. That said, that drive for freedom and that drive for independence can be a challenge for an independent school leader who says, yes, but we have goals and objectives. We have a mission. We have a program that we are trying to get to. And we can't have every US history teacher kind of doing it their way right. because we want to have a program that is cohesive and unified. What are the objectives for the Langley School over the next three to five years? The objectives for the Langley School over the next three to five years are to take a program that is thriving and a community that is very strong and take it to the next level. What whatever does that, that mean? that would be. Well, it's a good question. And when I was interviewed by the board, there was a lot of talk about sort of we want to go, we want to go from good to great, um, or we want to go from great to even better. Um, and I think my sense is that what I will do is get into the institution, get to know the community, get to know the teachers, and through a strategic planning process say, where is this school going in the next three to five years? what is important to us. But it's got to be organic and authentic to the institution, to the people that are there now. My job, I, or at least I perceive my job, to be coming into a community, um, partnering with all of the constituents, and helping them to chart the way forward. There's a lot going on with technology and education mm -hmm. right now. There's a lot going on with global education and 21st century learning. There's a lot going on. Langley has um, very young kids and is probably going to grow in that early childhood preschool program, which I think is an incredibly dynamic place right now. I just got back from a conference in LA, the Zero to Three conference, where right. they were looking at a lot of what was going on with very young children. I think we're learning more and more about what they can do and um, how we can partner with parents in those early years to make a very rich and robust program. So those are some of the things that Langley is going to be looking at. And I, but, but I think the question is, you know, what every institution wants is to be great at what it does. Um, to be known for being a vibrant, thriving, excellent school without losing those qualities that make it unique and special. So there's that tension between we want to get even better and we want to be on the map, but we don't want to lose any of the qualities of this community that bring people to our door and say, I want to be here. Well, Eleanor, thank you so much for your time and for oh, your sharing your experience, and thank you for your insights. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Great. Thanks.